Welcome back to, I don't know why I did that. Welcome back to the Fan Showdown. Today is season six, episode seven. Now, if you stumbled onto this video and you're kind of confused about what is going on here and you decide that after seeing today's video, you want to submit your design to the Fan Showdown, make sure to head to the description below where I got links to everything you need to know to get up to speed. Uh-oh with the fan showdown to send your designs in so we can test them. Today's video is brought to you by iFixit. I love iFixit. I've been using their tools for years. I actually have three of their ProTech toolkits, two at home, one at work. I don't know why I have two here, but I do and I love them. Recently, iFixit sent over their fix mat and fix hub. And when I first opened the fix mat, I was shocked that I didn't know this thing exists before now because I could have used this thing a long, a long time ago. Now, normally I would just use the ProTech toolkit lid to keep the screws in order. So I make sure I put the screws back in the same spot that it came out of to make sure everything works in the end. And that works, but the fix mat takes it to the next level. The fix mat is ESD safe. You can write notes on it like it's a dry erase board, which is pretty cool. It's magnetic, so magnets will stick to it, which is very helpful. The surface is non-slip, which I, I definitely love because I'm one of those people that if something is sitting on a table and it can be knocked off, I will knock it off every single time. The other new thing they sent over is the fix hub, which is a portable soldering iron system, which I'm a huge fan of already. Now, not long ago, I did buy a new soldering iron to replace the one I had for years and years and years. And if this thing would have been out when I bought that one, I would have gotten this hands down. The best part of the fix hub is obviously that it is cordless. It seems like every time I get in a situation where I need to solder something, I'm set up in a place so far away from my outlet, it's ridiculous. The fix hub, that's that's no longer a problem. To charge the fix hub or just run it off a wall socket like a normal soldering iron, there is a USB-C port on the backside. However, the flexibility to solder on the go, while not always useful, it's when you need it, it's, re it's really gonna pay off. And there's a simple switch on the soldering iron to turn it on and off as needed. Most importantly, I think, is the indicator light on the iron itself. It lets you know the state of the iron just at a glance. Blue means cool, red means hot, and flashing purple means it's either cooling down or heating up. So you know you don't burn yourself when you think it's off and it's not, ask me how I know. The temperature of the iron can be set anywhere from 200C to 420C noise and on the front of the fix hub you get two type c ports both of which can run the soldering iron you can plug it into either one of those guys or you could just use this thing as a power bank charge your phone i don't know whatever you want the battery capacity of the fix hub is 55 watt hours and the build quality is what you'd expect from a company like iFixit. so if you're in need of a new soldering iron you just want to go to iFixit's website to see what new tools they have to make your life easier head down to the description below and thank you at iFixit for sponsoring this video the first design we're going to look at today is the hybrid which was created by cause which is short for his actual name because let's be honest he, he did give me his whole name he said it was hard to pronounce and i just knew i didn't have a chance we're going to shorten it to cause right out of the gate because you know i wasn't going to get it right now we have seen over this season specifically higher performing fans or are normally blower type fans this might seem obvious given blower fans are generally better at creating static pressure than uh, normal actual fans and that were focused on static pressure in season six but that doesn't mean actual fans can't create static pressure we've all seen a jet engine if i oversimplified the point here. And sometimes packaging is just better with an actual fan, specifically when we use them on a, a PC setup like this. They're just easier to work with. Kaz decided to try and create an actual fan with some of the design cues taken from a blower fan to hopefully try to create an actual fan with increased overall performance. Each blade of the hybrid are hollow with small intakes towards the center of the fan near the hub. The idea being that this will act as a normal actual fan based on its blade design, but that the air that's intaked right around the hub there will be accelerated through the blades and out the back to hopefully boost its performance. Now the design isn't unique. I've seen designs like this come through in the past. I think we've maybe even tested a couple of them on the show, but I thought Kaz really did this in a, a very elegant way. And it printed out nicely, which is something I always do, do enjoy. My dog is very upset. Somebody, somebody rang the doorbell and it is unacceptable to him. Like I said, it printed great, which is always something I do enjoy and I hope it does well. Next up, we have the grain dryer, which was created by Overcast Props. This fan design takes inspiration from something we've all probably seen numerous times and has never given it much thought, even though it plays a critical role on a piece of equipment that's kind of key to making this whole world go round. The inspiration for this fan was the GSI grain dryer, specifically the CF AB320, which does exactly what it says on the tin. It, it dries grain. Overcast said that he used to work on these dryers and because of that, he knows how much air these things can move. And he thought to himself after seeing the fan showdown, I wonder what this fan design would do if it was scaled down. Because the normal diameter of uh, the fan that he said that he worked on was about two and a half feet. So we're 
or a little smaller than that. In addition to the fan, he also included a shroud, which will most likely improve his performance based on what we've seen in the past. It seems like if you can put a shroud on it, it, it only helps. The third fan of the day is the Involute, which was created by Barack. The Involute shape is something we, again, all see daily. Probably, you, you interact with something that is using the Involute shape, I guarantee every single day. What would that be, you ask? Well, the Involute shape is used to create gear teeth. The Involute shape ensures that gear teeth contact each other smoothly while maintaining a constant speed ratio, which is very important when you're trying to transfer power uh, uh, efficiently. Think of like your transmission, like a, a drill, anything. And they also help minimize wear and tear over time, which is also good in your transmission. Now this shape can be defined with a mathematical equation, which I'll put right here, but it's much easier to understand this design when you just use a piece of string and a marker. The shape is a type of curve created by unwrapping a taut line from around something like some sort of fixed base. Normally like a circle, you could think of it like our, our, the fan hub. Now you don't see this design a lot, this, this type of curve a lot on PC fans, but, but maybe we should, I, I don't know. The Involute fan, the, the fan blades on this fan, were designed with this, uh, with this in mind. They follow the Involute shape. Now the concern that I have is this thing is, this thing is real thin. I mean, it looks good, but, but there's not much to it. So based on fans we've seen like this in the past with these really thin blades that are trying to reduce weight as much as possible, when they start spinning up, they, they tend to deform and then contact uh, the fan frame, which is never really a good thing. But I mean, we're doing static pressure and the smaller your, uh, your gap between the frame is, the better it might be. So maybe it'll help them out in the end. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Now last up, we have this big boy. This is the Olympus and it was created by Scott. Now, at first glance, you're probably thinking, eh, this just looks like another cheater type fan, a really big fan disc and a really big shroud to go around it. But there's more to this thing than meets the eye. And it's, it's kind of all in the name, Olympus. You might not know this, but at one time, the United Kingdom was one of the most advanced nations when it came to aerospace engineering. And during that golden era in British aviation, uh, they, they came along with these things called the V-bombers. My personal favorite of the three is the Vulcan. It has a cool name, it looks cool, it's just a cool airplane all around. Now inside the Vulcan, it was powered by Rolls-Royce Olympus 201 engines. With the Olympus fan, Scott has taken that inspiration from that legendary bomber's engines to try to create a three-stage axial compressor, which is, which is kind of hard to, to see when you just look at it like this, but I saw that coming. So I essentially printed the shrouds, cut in half, put it together so it's much easier to see. The fan is comprised of three rotors and two stators, all powered by the uh, A12X25. The whole rotor assembly is just held together with a giant M6 screw, and Scott also included this little tiny, kind of like a nose cone piece to put on the top that houses a bearing that goes around the top of that socket head cap screw to just help stabilize it, because you know how things get when it's, when things start wobbling and stuff starts touching each other, the performance goes down. Now, when I saw this design, I was, I was pretty excited to give it a shot. I, people have tried to pull this off in different ways in the past, and whenever I see one, I'm like, maybe, maybe this is the one. And maybe this one will create static pressure that will give Axial fans a shot up the board when uh, trying to compete against their blower type compadre. Now, the biggest issue this thing's gonna have to overcome, like we said, is, is friction. Just things rubbing together. And the A12X25 motor is not the strongest motor, so if Scott is able to minimize the amount of friction within this fan and get the speeds up, the RPM up, it could be a beast, but it's, it, that's gonna be tough. But before that, as is the norms, let's, uh, let's have a listen. The Olympus came in around 78.9 dBA. The hybrid came in at 51.9. The grain dryer came in around 54.1 and the Involute came in around 76.9. Now the first thing we're going to notice here is that the Involute did exactly what we thought it was going to do. The blades deformed as it spun up and they touched the housing and made a whole bunch of noise. What I didn't expect though was for the Olympus to just sound like an air raid siren. But let's see if it's able to move some air along with all that noise it's making.
in the static pressure test, the hybrid came in at 2.8 millimeters of H2O, the grain dryer came in at 2.7, the Involute came in at 1.8, and the Olympus came in at 1.2, kinda. And I say kinda because I had to hold this, I had to hold the test stand at a specific angle to keep things from rubbing. When the fan was just sitting on top like I test every other fan, it only produced like 0.9. And that was mostly due to the fact that it just, there's just too much rubbing. Based on the clearances that uh, were put into this fan, it, it, when it sits like this, it just rubs too bad. But with that bearing support on the front, there is like an angle where everything just kind of spins freely. But to be fair, 0.9. <laughs> Placing the hybrid in first place, the grain dryer in second, the Involute in third, and the Olympus in fourth, and overall they finished 13th, 15th, 26th, and 29th. So for the time being, the, uh, the blower type fans are still reigning king uh, on season six of the Fan Showdown. With that in mind, though, I'm sure somebody out there can make an axial style compressor that actually works really, really well. I, I know you can do it. Somebody out there could do it. I'm just waiting. So thank you guys all for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to help support the channel. And again, if you want to submit your fan to the Fan Showdown, make sure to send me at least, dot, at least a .stl or a .stp to thefanshowdown at gmail.com. Head down to the description below. Check out all the links. See you in the next one.